In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a double ramp problem. After we, we analyze this, we're going to find the acceleration of the entire system. Now, when you're initially taking a look at the system, you actually don't know which way it's moving. You can take your best guess, but you may or may not be correct. So I wouldn't make any assumptions too early. So the main thing we want to do or recognize is that these two things are connected to each other and we have some main forces acting on the four and five kilogram mass. So let's go ahead and draw the force diagram for each of these. We have the force of gravity straight down, the normal force pushing up perpendicular to the ramp, and then we have the force of tension counteracting the slide. And then for the other one, we have basically all of the same sorts of things. We have a force of gravity straight down, normal force perpendicular, and then we have the force of tension in this direction. So the first thing we're gonna do is to break our FGs up into their parallel and perpendicular components. And then after we do that, we can go ahead and proceed to getting one step closer to finding the acceleration. Okay, so I went ahead and used a little bit of trick to find the FGX and FGY components. Now, what we did was we translated the angle of the incline up here into our triangle, and then we used the opposite end to find our FGX. So the sine of 40 degrees is our opposite, FGX, divided by our hypotenuse, which is FG. Our FG is MG, which is mass times 9.8. So I did 4 times 9.8 to get that 39.2 newtons. I cross multiply that over, and then I got my FGX of 25.20 newtons. I did something very similar for the FGY, but I used the cosine of 40 degrees so that I could find my adjacent side to that 40 degree angle. Did the same thing, used MG 4 times 9.8, crossed it over, and then I got an FGY of 30.03 newtons. Um, I left out the work for the other triangle and components. Um, I just wrote FGX for the five kilogram mass and FGY for the 42.44 Newton one. It looks very similar, except my two angles were replaced with the 30 degrees and my denominators were replaced with 49 Newtons because I did five times 9.8 for these two over here. So we're basically taking a look at this whole entire system right over here. Okay, now when we're taking a look at that whole entire system, we have to be pretty careful because we don't want to take any forces that are internal in that system. So anything that's inside of that circled in area is not going to affect the acceleration of it. Um, so the two FTs are going to be insignificant. And then this FN and FGY are going to be equal and opposite of one another and aren't going to be contributing to the parallel movement of this five kilogram mass. And same thing with this FN and this FGY, those are going to be equal and opposite to one another and they're not going to um, contribute to the parallel motion of the four kilogram object. So with that being said, all we have is our FGX that's tugging the five kilogram down the ramp and this FGX that's tugging the four kilogram down the ramp. So we want to see which one is greater, which is pretty easy. It is definitely this FGX, the 25.20 Newtons. Now, although this mass is smaller, it's tilted up on a greater angle. So it turns out that this FGX is slightly bigger. So when, when we plug that in, we can say that the sum of forces 
in the x direction or the parallel direction equals 25.20 newtons minus 24.5 newtons of the other one and that equals the mass of nine kilograms because that's the whole system with the four and five combined times a and then if we do the algebra for that we're basically going to divide both sides by nine and our acceleration is gonna be 0 0.08 meters per second squared. So it's not gonna get very much acceleration because this 25.20 does not exceed this 24.5 by much. So when you're working on a problem like this, you wanna make sure you break down your FG into the perpendicular and parallel components and take a look at the entire um, thing as one big system. Ignore a lot of those forces because these two are in a different axis in equilibrium. Same thing with Fn and Fgy for this one, different axes in equilibrium. So we're just gonna see which of the Fgx's is greater to see which direction the entire system is gonna move. So it turns out it's gonna be sliding down this way and this one is gonna be sliding up the ramp. So once you put everything into a formula like we did here in green, because you're looking at it as one large system, you wanna make sure you combine both of the masses and write nine kilograms as opposed to the four or five and each of those masses individually is going to accelerate at 0 0.08 meters per second squared because they're connected. So I hope that was helpful to you in solving a double ramp problem. Thank you for watching and listening.